So welcome back. Uh, where I left off last time, I thought I was uh, in good shape, got a little jammed up on a couple things, had to make some money. I'm gonna try to film some of this myself just because my brothers are kind of busy. Now we're gonna see how bad it is me using the camera. Uh, so far, so, so bad. <laughs> gonna be putting coilovers here and there. Same thing in the rear. It's gonna be a little tight over here because there's pedals and like right here is where the coilover needs to be and obviously this thing steers so that'll be a little tough. I think I can make it work. I don't think I'm gonna use this seat but it's good to mock up. There's a, a Camino. That's fun. Alright so I've been working on this thing for a couple hours now. You can see I mounted this coilover. There's obviously gonna be a spring in here but I have to have it so it's fully compressed. I think I'm gonna weld this in here. Put a plate here. And this is steel, little bracket I made. Weld a piece on there and have that bolted on there. This is what I got mocked up. And then this piece of aluminum is just tack welded in there right now. I want to uh, put it, the steering shaft up through here. There's gonna be two U joints in it. Probably one here and one here. So I kind of need to know where that is gonna, gonna run at. This is uh, a half rack and pinion. It's basically steers here. And what I wanna do is add this little rubber boot on here so that this part will be in the water and the seal will be right here. And the steering shaft goes through. It's gonna come up through here and this will be the hull or the line of it, so I don't want water coming in through the steering shaft. So I'm gonna weld a piece of piece of aluminum on this. I have to pull that seal out, obviously, and these boots off so they don't melt. So I'm gonna try to weld that right on there. And I can slide this rubber boot over this coupler. And I have another one on this side. And then it'll be able to just clamp in. This doesn't need to be this long, so I might cut this down. Let me try and get that bearing out there too. So there's a bolt that goes through there. So I got some uh, spacers made so I can uh, put this on and it stays centered, which is helpful when you're welding it. So I'm gonna weld this a little bit at a time so it doesn't get too hot. I'm gonna put this guy right here. Drill a hole in it and put a, uh, a nutser grease fitting in there. So here's what I got. I just basically bolted it to a quarter inch plate. I'm gonna tack weld it in place so you can actually see. You can kind of see how it is. This is where the rubber boot goes on. This is extension housing, which I'm gonna weld this into the hull here. So seal off this area. All right, so here's where we ended up. Got this sort of mocked in. Put a cap on there, I had to cut down a little bit. Sort of slicing this area here to give clearance for the tire. As you can see, our steering is down in there. Yeah, so that's what we got. As you can see, I have built the strut towers. I'm gonna have another one that comes, swoops down in here. And just as a timeline, we're about uh, four days in at this point since I started filming. So we're not making real quick progress, but this stuff is important. Obviously once these are uh, done everything will move a lot quicker because the suspension and the steering will be you know sorted this is your seal so somehow I have to connect this to the body and have this open because this is where the propeller shaft is coming out at and it's pretty critical that it's serviceable and accessible and it has to tie in somehow where it looks good but we'll get there Putting this panel in here now. I ended up cutting this down a little bit and putting the piece up here because it needs to be at an angle just because of the way this thing is shaped. All of this is 
just being made as I go. There's no plan or anything in drawing. So it takes a while. Yeah, just showing you what's going on. Got the front pretty much where I can get to a stopping point. Gonna weld these on solid. They're just clamped on there for now. That'll basically finish the structure of the control arm. And I'm gonna retap those, bring them in a little bit. And then I gotta mount the shocks. So I gotta make some brackets in here for those guys to rest on. And just like that, it's done. Got the struts about where they need to be. I didn't film any of the fabrication because it's pretty straightforward. We're just cutting square stuff and brackets and stuff. As you can see, there is a propeller. There's gonna be one on either side of this. And now this is another thing that's kind of interesting about this, which makes it a prototype, is I'm thinking of having these on some sort of a hydraulic thing so that they can go down further than this and then they can come up. The goal with this is to plane out on the surface. And the only way you can do that really is if your propeller is still touching the water and getting full grip. I'm not really sure if I want to use like a uh, hydraulics or an electric system to make that happen. But I'm not really working on that right now. What I'm working on is trying to connect this part here up to the strut towers up here somehow and through this seating area here because what I want to do is put this thing on wheels at ride height because it's important to get the thing at stance right where it's going to sit and then you start making the body lines. I want it to be nice looking. I want it to have a cool shape. But basically you got to get to that ride height. I got to be able to sit in it. I got to have a steering column. So I got to have the driver and passenger seating figured out and then I can shape a body around that. And I'm looking to get a roof on this, like a hard top roof. I'm not totally sure I'm going to be able to pull that off. Well, I know I could pull it off, but I'm not sure it's going to look. I'm not sure it's going to look cool. And if I can't get it to look right, I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to have a windshield um, and do it like a speedster. Okay, a little bit of an update here. I keep forgetting that I'm supposed to be filming, you know, but it's kind of hard when you're working. I ended up putting some supports in here in the center. This is a piece I made. It's tied into the uh, towers there. And basically I'm going to come off of this and come to the back right up there. I just have a half inch rod going across and uh, that is uh, going to be basically the shape of the car or the top. And basically when you're sitting in it, their shoulders are gonna be right above those so you can rest your arm on the top of the vehicle. I need to make an arch that goes out and also that comes up. So I need a very gentle radius in that. The tool that I'm gonna use to do that with is this tubing roller. I'm not gonna use my bender because I need a just barely a roll in it. And this is kind of something I made or remade this tool to function in a press. I ended up using the same setup to do the bars on my uh, Volkswagen, those nice curving angles. And I did that on this tool. Yeah, you can bend some pretty nice, pretty nice radiuses with that. I think these are just about where they need to be. They will need to notch out here. Get those tack welded exactly where it should be. This is going to get cut out. This part here I thought was going to be good, but it's not. I still want to put a top on this and uh, really, really trying to do that. And that it's gonna require me sitting really low, otherwise I'd have an ugly bubble top. And I don't want an ugly bubble top. I want this thing to look cool and work cool. Obviously there's gonna be some compromises to that as far as like visibility or whatever, but uh, I think it'll still be a pretty good comfortable driving position. Also might be a little bit safer to be down lower in the car. And this stuff is actually adds a lot of protection because it's kind of like a little roll cage. Just gonna let this run for a while as I work here. I got those tubes bent in and basically tack welded into place. 
I think it looks pretty good. There's a lot of fitting and this and that, but I'm pretty sure I got it symmetrical. This bar right here is going to be the the back of the seat rest. And it kind of supports down in here, ties these things together. I think I'm going to move this, this rod here down lower. Might cut into this. I'm going to finish that boot here on both sides. Stay tuned. All right, so it's been a couple weeks since I worked on this thing last. I kind of got stuck here. I wasn't sure what to do with this whole area here because this has kind of got to uh, hold the propeller tube. I don't know, it was just some weird shapes. I couldn't really figure it out. So I took a break on it. Basically gonna put this Kind of will seal in there pretty good and I can weld it up on this side and the reason I have to do this right now it flexes a little bit in here on the lower part of the frame if I try to pick it up and set it on its on its wheels so I have to solid form this chassis a little bit more before I can get it rolling welded those things in the wrong place up there I ended up lowering them so now they're down here at least this side is and I'm pretty much going to mount the propeller somewhere in here, possibly lower. All right, so here's a little uh, tool I made for my press to make this bend. Um, this is eighth inch, and it's pretty stiff when it's, this, when it's this long. You can't really bend it any other way but some hydraulic thing. So basically, I put together this little uh, press thing in my uh, bench press here, and it, it I used oxygen cylinder, an old oxygen cylinder I cut up and I kind of crimped it a little bit on the top one so it kind of fits into each other and then you can just work the lever here and, it, and basically I just drew a line on here, marked it there one thing it will kind of do is put a little dimples on the corners um, but I can smooth those out a little bit when we get done. There you go. It's a little bit more than a right angle, but it straightens out fairly easily. Smack some of these things with the hammer and dolly. And then I'll run it through the uh, English wheel. Okay, I got the pretty much the flattest die I can in there. For the flat stuff, and then I'll run it right along the bead with a uh, high crown die. That's about all it takes. I don't know if you can see any of that. As opposed to the other side, which... Sort of dented. And it... Uh, Seems like it strengthens it a little bit too. Just adding a cold roll. See that one's kind of flat. That one's kind of round. There's a little tightener down here, which smushes it together. This is actually a really fun tool to use. Hopefully, get to use it more often on this project. There you go.